Northumberland is the frontier zone between England and Scotland. Hadrian's Wall is the best-known border of the entire Roman Empire. It forms the northwest boundary of an empire that stretched east to present-day Iraq and south to the Sahara Desert. Most of Northumberland is north of Hadrian's Wall that separated the Romans from the barbarians and where it narrows towards the coast is the garrison town of Berwick-upon-Tweed. It was much fought over between the Scots and English, where it changed hands 13 times. It is situated north of the river, but the national border skirts to the north, so it is an English town, but the local football team play in a Scottish league. Northumberland is the least densely populated county in England, which may be the reason why its vast and magnificent beaches are often empty. The seaside village of Almouth benefits from being on a spit of land, making it a cul-de-sac, the only through traffic being the service bus. Its location is unique. To the east is the North Sea, and west the broad estuary of the River On. It used to be a port, but that declined when the river silted up. For the photographer, it is the ideal setting for sunrises and sunsets, with plenty of foreground interest on the riverside provided by moored boats. Many coastal views over the North Sea benefit from an early morning or late evening visit. Take a walk from Craster, a bit further up the coast from Allenmouth to Dunstanborough Castle and opportunities, given the right weather, abound. Don your best boots and with care grab the opportunity by carefully negotiating the rocks, the sea crashing ashore, all captured of course on shutter priority. I prefer frozen water because milky water has degenerated into a cliché. Because why? Because everybody's doing it. Dunstanborough Castle is a ruin, but at Bamborough the castle is lived in. Like Dunstanborough, I look for a viewpoint that includes the power of the sea. North of the castle, the beach has the unusual addition of wartime defence relics, now posing as giant dice. They make an effective foreground, but watch depth of field and use the hyperfocal distance to ensure that everything, yes everything, is sharp. Tourists flock to Holy Island for more reasons than photography, and that could be a problem. The semi-detached nature of the island means that you are limited to several hours a day, and if you want the place to yourself, best to stay overnight. Beyond the Priory is the Old Harbour, and very often boats in various stages of repair and disrepair make effective foregrounds to the distant prospect of Lindisfarne Castle. Both Castle and Priory are paid to enter, unless of course you are a member of either National Trust or English Heritage, but there are plenty of views from outside. Finding the best viewpoint in landscape photography is half the battle and often a map can help, preferably a paper map that shows more information. Walkworth Castle is a case in point. Stop at its car park and, whilst the prospect is impressive, what is not immediately apparent without a map is the River Coquette just below. It is not obvious to the casual eye, but from the riverbank are some of the best views of the castle. Afterwards, and again a map will help, follow the river path back to town for the church and Old Bridge complete with its gatehouse. 
A map will also tell you that some of the best views of Annick Castle are from the River Own, but for now I'm going to take the road out of town towards Rothbury. Halfway are Corby's Cracks, and there are laybys where the motorist can pull over safely. This is one of the best distant prospects of the Cheviot Hills, and just below is a disused railway viaduct with Edlingham Castle just behind. A detour off the main road is easy, and there is parking for the church and castle. Well worth a detour. A visit to Rothbury will almost certainly be combined with Cragside, which is National Trust, and their other main property is at Wallington, further to the south beyond the Simonside Hills. These form part of the extensive range of rounded hills that are the Cheviots, that stretch northwards to Wooler and across the border into Scotland. Some years ago, with friends, uh, who were members of, incidentally, a mountain rescue team, I had the honour of being safely escorted into some of the Cheviot's remotest areas. It included a visit to a rescue hut, hard by the Scottish border, that thankfully we did not have to use. Nevertheless, we entered, which was very spartan, and you can guess where the loo was, possibly in another country. The Bremish Valley is popular with tourists, and there is a National Park Visitor Centre, also St Michael and All Angels Church. By all means proceed up the valley, but other people may have the same idea. When I last came, the final section of the road to the little village of Linhope was private, but you can walk it, and if you stroll further up, don't miss Linhope Spout, an impressive waterfall where again I practiced a bit of shutter priority. I find the northern part of the Cheviots the most photogenic. Being a line of continuous rounded hills, trying to find a bit of landscape variety is challenging. At Wooler, the hills rise to Humbleton Hill and Yevering Bell, both sites of antiquity and you can see why, because of the views northwards. St Cuthbert's Way crosses this landscape, and for security, especially if you are unfamiliar with these hills, it might be best to stick to it for your own safety. Nevertheless, the views are still very impressive. Berwick-upon-Tweed is a good place to finish a border garrison town of the highest architectural quality. There are three bridges, the most impressive being the Royal Border Bridge, taking the main line from London to Edinburgh into Berwick as it snakes around the town. The station was built on the site of the old castle, which I don't think would be permitted today, of which very little remains. Walk by the River Tweed for some of the town's finest houses, but don't miss the barracks and fortifications. Also, Holy Trinity Church is nearby. For many years back in medieval times, because of its strategic position and for its lucrative wool trade, Berwick found itself on the front line of the battle zone between England and Scotland, and its bastion defences are still very much in evidence today. Of course, things are now much quieter, but Berwick is worthy of detailed exploration for both historians and photographers, where several days are easily occupied. <laughs> 